NFO President Devon Woodland has talked with singer Willie Nelson about the Farmer Defense Fund that will grow out of the big Illinois Stadium concert where many country and rock stars performed at a farm benefit. Here are some suggestions by Woodland. Three areas that were discussed uh, to some extent. One, uh, the organizers were concerned about the farm bill, and uh, they were interested in seeing that there was something in a legislative way that would give the farmers in this country immediate relief. And uh, we do need uh, credit for short term. Now, secondly, uh, the Family Farm Defense Fund uh, is an area that has been discussed quite uh, broadly. At the time of Conley's concert, that was one of the principal focuses. It was formed there and now has seven organizations who are the board of directors of that. Seven of the general farm organizations uh, will direct the use of those funds. And this group, this group of seven, probably represents 75% of the farmers in the country. And so it would be uh, for wide geographic coverage if the funds were to be directed or a portion of them would be directed in that way. Now, the Family Farm Defense Fund's purpose of existence is we think there's a lot of things that are immoral, if not illegal, going on in the rural communities when uh, the creditor just comes in and simply takes from that farmer, uh, his livestock, his machinery, whatever it might be. Uh, there is a due process of law, and farmers need to know what those rights are. And when he reaches that point of uh, financial uh, embarrassment or financial uh, uh, conditions, he doesn't have the resources to go get an attorney and to go into the courts and protect his personal interests. Then's when we would step in as the Family Farm Defense Fund, provide the legal assistance. And then the third area that was discussed is that uh, farm organizations have been structured for a purpose, and each of them have a role to fill. And so uh, I would hope that some funds are directed to those uh, well-established uh, farm organizations whose goals and uh, principles are well understood and established. Devon Woodland, president of the NFO. He also cautioned against certain possible uses of the fund. It should not be given to political action committees, nor to land-grant university studies, nor to overseas junkets to promote world trade. Woodland also stressed that the ideas he discussed in this interview are merely suggestions based on his talks with singer Willie Nelson and on Woodland's ground floor experience. When the Painesville, Minnesota Chamber of Commerce hosted one of NFO's cash flow plans meetings, one of the speakers was Rene Nice, national treasurer and trust administrator for NFO. Diane Blonigan talked to him. Rainey, you talked about some of the advantages to the farmers as far as security of the checks that they would receive. That's right. Beyond the commodity programs, the one thing the National Farmers Organization has that is unique within agriculture today is the Trust Protected Check Network. What that really means is, is that the trust, in behalf of the producer, goes out and secures creditworthy buyers to purchase his agricultural production that he has produced and then acting in his behalf, it collects the money from the buyer, puts it into the trust, and then distributes that money back out to the producers on a timely basis. Probably the two most critical things to a producer today is, number one, will I get paid for what I produce, and will I get paid on a timely basis? Because without payment, all the work and all the effort and all the toil that he's put into raising, whether it be livestock, milk, or grain, is all for naught without getting paid for the commodity that he's produced. And that's what that trust system does for them. You know, the, the producer today is the best producer of, of the agricultural production anywhere in the world. But he is not an accountant, and he is not expected to be the type of an individual that has to review financial statements and other pertinent financial information to tell him who is credit worthy and who is not. Within agriculture today, many times you'll find a buyer that's out there paying more. And a producer that's on his own, that's marketing his own commodities, separate from our programs, doesn't know whether or not that buyer is paying more because he needs it or is paying more because he can't buy it from anywhere else because he doesn't have the credit to buy it from anywhere else. And so we do that for a producer. We determine that credibility with a buyer. And so we offer a service that he can't get anywhere else. If, in fact, a buyer does default, and within our programs, in bargaining for over $3.5 million in product every day, 
But if, in fact, we have a problem with a buyer, after we've contracted and delivered to him, we have a, what we call a reserve system or a security net that goes ahead and pays the producer out of the reserve. He is made whole. And then the reserve in the producer's behalf pursues the buyer for collection of that receivable. But the point is the producer does not have to wait at all for his money. He's paid on a timely basis, whereas producers who are out there by themselves in the marketplace either have to wait on the federal or state government for help, which could take months or even years before they get any money. This is Diane Blonigan from Painesville, Minnesota. Diane interviewed Rene Neese, National Treasurer of NFO. Jack Cruz is giving us a report on his latest trip on the swing toward farm bargaining. We've had a positive response from the producers in Nebraska. This past week, I was in Washington County and Burt County, Nebraska. That's just north of Blair. Uh, we've got 16 new members out there this week. We picked up uh, farmers of all sizes. One of them farms 3,000 acres. He needs help, and he knows it. Uh, another one has 100,000 bushels new crop corn that has to go. He's not in the program. He's squeezed for money like all farmers. He's going to have to sell that corn between now and December 1st. A priest, Father John McCaslin from Decatur, he signed his parish up. They have 110 acres. He thinks this is the only way to go. He said, you guys need help. We need help. You have the only solution. There's a young veterinarian in Tecama, Nebraska. David Johnson is his name. He said, You're the, you've got the only solution. I'm supporting you. He, he's not a farmer. He doesn't have a farm. He's been there three years. He gave us a certificate of support, $75. He's saying, we need your program, because without farmers, I won't be here. Well, what size of farm operators have you talked to? Well, most of the ones that we've talked to in Nebraska, uh, they're hog farmers, cattle farmers. There's a lot of hog farmers that are shipping through National Farmers Organization. Uh, a lot of this impetus in these counties is coming sp a spinoff from the Howells Nebraska Collection Point. They've been shipping their hogs uh, direct ship from those counties right to the packers with the arrangements being made through Howells. What about the financial structure, the people who lend money for farm operations? An interesting point, the production credit manager, PCA, in Tecama, Nebraska. We went in there with one of our NFO hog checks. When the member that was with me wanted to apply it towards his farm debt. The manager said, I'm familiar with these checks. 85 to 90 percent of the checks we get come from proceeds of the National Farmers Organization. Another point that interests those who finance farm operations, Jack Cruz, is the trust protection for the checks to NFO members. It's Mark Rolfing of the Grain Department of National Farmers. He's been conducting a number of follow-up meetings these come after the cash flow meetings that have been scheduled all across the United States. He talks to grain farmers. Mark, what do you tell them? It's a two-part program. We want to use this fall and winter to raise those grain prices. We know we can. The first uh, step involves getting the grain price back up to the loan level. As you know, uh, this has been the first time in some 50 years of price supports that we've seen the price of grain uh, go below the loan level and stay below. And it's only because we as farmers just aren't disciplined in the marketing of our grain. We can turn that around. Some of the things uh, we're talking about at these meetings are uh, on that first part is to get the grain that's eligible for loan tied up in a loan program. So we can get the major portion of this crop tied up, not let it on the market right there at harvest. Well, what can organized grain producers do together? The next thing we talk about above that, past getting it back up to loan, is to get your grain blocked with NFO now. We need to show the industry that we are going to do something about grain prices, that as farmers, we cannot continue at these low levels. We have to send a sign uh, to both our political friends, but more importantly to the industry, and tell them that we're about ready to do something. And blocking grain is the first step. On through the year, sell your grain through NFO's grain program. On several sales, space throughout the marketing season to meet your cash flow needs and stair-step the market. That's very important. Any glut of market, a glut of grain throughout the marketing year is a depressing factor, and you have to avoid it. Another thing to avoid 
is the deferred pricing, the delayed price, or the price later agreements. It's probably the single most negative factor on grain prices over the last five years. What does the NFO offer instead? We have an alternative that will help you out. If you don't have the storage, it's called our preferred pricing plan, and this is for the grain that you normally would be looking at a delayed pricing situation. Well, what do you urge them to do at these follow-up meetings? Farmers have to become involved and support actions that will raise the general price level through physical movement and through uh, psychological means. Uh, it's very, very important that farmers sign on to some activity that raises prices. And then uh, throughout the year, certainly, uh, be thinking about a supply management plan for your farm. I've been talking with Mark Rolfing of the Grain Department of National Farmers. He's been discussing these matters with grain farmers all across the country. When the Painesville, Minnesota Chamber of Commerce hosted one of the meetings for action to cash flow agriculture, Diane Blonigan was there. She talked to two farm leaders who were putting on just as good a demonstration of unity as the Painesville Chamber of Commerce was in organizing a farm bargaining power meeting. The two farm leaders Blonigan interviewed were Dennis Shadeen, assistant to the president of the Minnesota Farmers Union, and Ed Graff, assistant to the president of NFO. Dennis, would you tell us a little bit of uh, some of the things you told us of the cooperation between National Farmers Organization and Farmers Union? Well, we in Farmers Union feel that if the family farm in rural America is going to survive, we certainly have to work together. And we do have a good working relationship with the National Farmers Organization. And next week, there will be a, a visit in our office uh, explaining to our some of our Farmers Union people and our Farmers Union um, uh, marketing, livestock marketing cooperative people about the program that you have in marketing. Also on the national level, Cy Carpenter and Mr. Woodland are, are together on the phone and in person very often discussing uh, ways that together we can work to solve the problems and make a better rural America and a better country to live in. And Blonigan talks to Ed Graff, assistant to the president of NFO. Ed, what were some of the things that impressed you about the meeting tonight? That the assistant to the president of the Farmers Union was here and spoke and explained to the people that they had a meeting with the National Farmers Organization scheduled for next week to work out a marketing program for their members to go through the NFO. And at the same time, I was able to announce that next week, the NFO will be in Washington supporting their efforts and helping to do everything on, uh, in legislation, which we know we must keep at. So I couldn't see anything, Diane, other than this was a mo one of the most positive meetings uh, I've ever attended, and we saw groups working together. And if unity is ever to come, it must come now. This is Diane Blinigan reporting from Painesville, Minnesota. Diane Blonigan is director of Minnesota Public Relations for NFO. These meetings to cash flow agriculture were held coast to coast in August and early September. Now there are commodity follow-up meetings with this same kind of unity going forward. This county informational tape is for NFO meetings in the month of October. The reports were compiled and edited by Don Mack, director of the broadcast division, National Farmers Organization. I'm Phil Allen, and that for this month is something to think about.